start by just uh, first of all saying thank you so much to Steve and Tama for these excellent presentations and for bringing forward some really important information. Steve, it was very interesting to hear you talk about a kind of border crossing that you have done by moving from the U.S. to New Zealand and some of your experiences in uh, sort of making your way into the cultures of New Zealand and trying to really center your understanding of what it takes to do both uh, school psychology and site work and trauma work from a culturally grounded uh, stance. Um, and then, Tama, it was, uh, you went into so much detail and it was so helpful, I think. I think we would probably all agree. So helpful to really get a chance to hear you talk from your experience about um, how, it, for me, I guess what I got out of it is how you teach students uh, in terms of a multicultural and international uh, sort of perspective on doing not only trauma work, but psychotherapy in general. And really emphasizing the self of the therapist in that process. The need for the therapist to really understand uh, who we are in our multiple identities and social locations uh, and how those inform sort of how we, how we experience the client as well as then doing our homework and understanding uh, what informs the client's experiences both in terms of their identities and social locations as well as their social, political, and cultural context. Um, and I thought your, those last recommendations about the, uh, got some ideas to think about in doing trauma training were quite relevant. Um, I could really relate to those because I, I too am involved in training and uh, do, do take people to, uh, especially to Asia, uh, take students to Asia, and so those I found really helpful for myself and I could really resonate with those. I want to just add a couple of things before we move into a conversation where we both have, it's the good news and the bad news about not having a couple of our, uh, of our presenters uh, is that like it's very unusual for us to have a few minutes to actually have a conversation among all of us. So I want to make sure and give time for that. So I'm going to say just about three things so we have about five minutes. I want to remind everyone, uh, some of you may or may not be aware of this, but several years ago, um, Division 35 and Division 52, the uh, Global Issues Committee of 35, uh, and I think Tama was actually, uh, you were co-chair or chair of that committee at that time. D division 35 is the Psychology of Women Division, and Division 52, an International Division Committee on Women, spearheaded a, a um, process that eventually resulted in APA Council passing what is called the APA Resolution on Culture and Gender Awareness in International Psychology. And I would really encourage everyone who is interested in international training or international work in psychology to take a look at that resolution because I think that some of the things that we've been hearing about today in this uh, discussion are reflected in this, in this resolution. One of the sort of grounding pieces to the resolution and the position paper that was written in order to prepare for the resolution to go forward uh, involved uh, really recognizing the, um, the ways in which U.S. psychology have been uh, dominant and in some cases uh, colonizing uh, in terms of how uh, it is exported uncritically to other parts of the world. Um, and what do we need to do about that, for example, as a U.S. psychologist or psychologist from any country who, are at, who is actually border crossing, who is actually working outside the U.S.? And um, I think that uh, one of the things, I think this is a really important uh, piece to introduce to students by having them read the resolution and also have discussions, much like what uh, Tamo brought out, 
about the ways in which we have been enculturated in the U.S., not only as psychologists, actually, but as citizens of the U.S. so often, to sort of view ourselves as the authorities or the experts in terms of psych psychological knowledge and skills. Um, I, for me, telling just a brief story of my own, uh, in my uh, border crossings into South and Southeast Asia, one of the things that I discovered uh, after I had been working on the ground for quite a while with the Burma, uh, the refugee communities of Burma, uh, along the Thai Burma border, and also with uh, people from Cambodia and Thailand, is that there is, was a big buzz that I was able to, I was very grateful that I finally was able to hear about uh, regarding their concerns and their experiences quite often with people who would come in, consultants, teachers, researchers, from outside of their countries, particularly uh, from Western Europe, for example, in the U.S., to do this, this work, and how often they were not viewed as experts on their own lives and their own experiences, that there was this um, expert stance taken by the people who came in. This created all kinds of problems for them, um, and really in many ways, and I think, Tammy, you mentioned this, uh, it actually ended up in some ways disrupting their own cultural understandings and privileging Western understandings of trauma, for example, and what we needed to do about it, how we needed to work uh, in trauma recovery. So, um, you know, there's, there's not enough time to go into a lot of detail about that, but I did want to bring that up. And that, there, that when we enter other cultures, I think we heard a lot about the, the importance of having partnerships with people. Uh, the importance, I think, Steve, you brought out the idea of the importance of working with what sometimes are referred to as cultural ropers, people who do work on the ground. Um, and I just one last comment about this. Um, I uh, have a little, we, I, a friend, colleague of mine and I did a little video about um, border crossings. And we interviewed people on the ground in Southeast Asia. And one of our interviewees who was uh, named Mu Amen, who is from Burma, and who do, does a lot of translation and interpreting, collaborative partnering with us in the work that we do on the ground. He, I asked him what was his experience, what were some of the challenges he experienced. He said, he said, oh, he said, when, uh, when people come in sometimes from the West to collaborate, they basically, in some, his, he didn't use this term, but they objectify him. They use him as their instrument, and they don't consult with him about the culture, the context, what ways that uh, people are responding in the group, they don't really treat him as a partner. They, and so this was re a really important message for, that he put forward that, and that he really emphasized and that actually uh, many of the people that we interviewed uh, emphasized. So I'd like to close it up now and thank everybody and turn it over to Sandra.